Hey folks, Aaron from Bean Sprout here. Um, we've had some questions recently come up on social media about um, how we keep all of this organized out here and stay productive. I think this question comes up mainly because of our perceived um, productivity out here in the shop. We, I have been finishing a lot of instruments this year. So that being said, I've been out here too much lately. Uh, I appreciate the work, obviously, um, but when you have a business like ours, if you need to make more money, you just get back out in the shop and make more stuff. But um, we had some uh, excavation work that had to happen around the shop. We had house repair stuff. We had a lot of money going out and we needed to fill that hole real quick. So I've been building too much. I am tired, my hands hurt. Uh, I'm looking forward to a little bit of a rest this summer. So, but I'm grateful, obviously. So staying organized, um, we take about four or five custom orders a month. And um, those folks usually have to wait about 10 or 12 months for their custom order. And uh, we keep it organized out uh, with the customer uh, with a little database that's on our phones and devices. I think this is called Google Sheets. And so it just has the month, their name, contact info, the specs for their instrument, space for a serial number, uh, space whether I've selected their wood or not, and whether they've paid and shipped and all that. So whether if one of us makes a change to the database, it populates all the phones or all the phones and devices. But then old school, we also have um, little note cards that go with each instrument. So I have the June note cards on the cubby holes over there because the June is in progress. The, and so I, here I have July and August. It could be as simple as this gentleman who's got, he wants a regular uke, Porterford cedar and walnut, low G, no pickup, myrtle binding, tenor size, and he wants the figure eight headstock. Or it could be a little more complicated like this person where they've got a banjo, it's kind of a special model and they have uh, special needs for about the shape and th thickness of the neck as well as multiple aesthetic ideas they have. So either way, I can do it. And as long as uh, it fits on one card, I'm okay with it. Uh, so, you know, we've got the digital and the uh, analog here to keep things organized. Three months ahead of time, Nicole talks to these people and starts this process. And by a month before their start, we freeze all their specs. We can't change anything then, because by then I'm already making the, their parts. And so to have someone, um, you know, make a big change when I've already started making the parts, it really throws a wrench in things. So um, that way too, I can look ahead. I can say, oh yeah, we're almost out of tuners. Oh, I need to order cases. Oh, I'm almost out of myrtle. I better mill some more. Or, hey, the cedar neck blanks are running low. In a couple months, I'll need more. I go out to the shed, grab some cedar, and make some neck blanks. So, you know, ordering supplies and parts and materials and making parts um, is a, it has to be done one, two, three months in advance. Uh, so, um, yeah, and then if it wasn't for Nicole, I wouldn't get nearly anything done because she's doing all the shipping, taking all the money. She's doing most of the customer contact. Um, and I really appreciate that. Now, when I want to do a stock instrument, I have to first give preference to the waiting list of people who want scout ukuleles. So I try to make one a month, but I haven't been getting to that this year as well as I'd like. And then uh, the stock instruments I make beyond that are just up to me, builder's choice. So I'm, I kind of rotate through sizes and models so that kind of always have something new going. Um, or I might really just be inspired by a cool piece of wood. And so I might uh, make an instrument as stock just because I want to use that wood. Also, it's a place for me to experiment, try new design ideas, try new materials or techniques, or it's a place for me to just express myself. I love making the instruments for folks. Um, but to give the chance to get the chance every once in a while to just make something for my pleasure is very important. So yeah, we've got the custom orders, we've got a few stock instruments, we've got scouts. Then there's repairs on top of that that I take in, um, or maybe a, an occasional warranty fix for an instrument from Bean Sprout. I still occasionally get warranty or not. Oh, sorry, not warranty. I still occasionally get out of warranty my Amoe repairs because those are instruments I built in general, so people want me to work on them and whatever else. Um, and staying organized can be tough. It helps that Nicole and I are pretty detail oriented and artistic. That's really kind of what makes it work out. I have to admit that if I want to keep going at this pace or if I want to um, expand or try anything new or, you know, next steps, I might need to bring some friends in to help with certain aspects. 
or I might just slow down and not make as many. I mean, you know, my body <laughs> needs to rest every once in a while too. So yeah, just kind of sitting here musing. I don't, I don't know what this all means at the moment, except for I'm grateful for the work. We're really grateful to get to do art every day and make objects that then people make their own art with. It's just like totally amazing. So yeah, that's how we keep organized. Um, lots of, lots of listening to customers, lots of detail work and lots of hard work. That's pretty much it. Cheers.